They're literally the ones that have the printing presses. All right, and if they have control of the printing presses and they're buying gold, what does that tell you about the currency that they can print? Does it say that, oh, their currency, whether it's euros or Japanese yen or yuan or dollars, oh, those, those currencies will be really good. Not really, right? If they're, they wouldn't be buying massive amounts of gold if they thought their currencies were going to hold their value. It's telling us something. And by the way, is that net positive for Bitcoin? Yeah, over the longer term, over the next two, four, six years, absolutely, in my opinion, it is strong for Bitcoin. Professional trader Gareth Soloway continues to maintain a bullish outlook on Bitcoin, especially in the current era of currency devaluation. The dollar index, which tracks the greenback strength against a basket of key currencies, is up 0.32% since yesterday at 105.53. While healthy, the index score is well below the 114 from a year ago. China is witnessing the biggest flight of capital in years. Its currency has been hammered from all fronts as money leaves its financial markets. Amidst the tumultuous tides of economic crises, gold stands as a beacon of stability. This is precisely why 75% of surveyed central banks have identified performance during times of crisis as a paramount factor in their organizational decisions to hold gold. Soloway suggests that countries turning to gold indicates a loss of value in their currencies. He believes this situation is ultimately favorable for Bitcoin in the long run. The Federal Reserve held interest rates steady in a decision released on Wednesday, while also indicating it still expects one more hike before the end of the year and fewer cuts than previously indicated next year. Immediately after the Fed announcement was released, the Bitcoin price broke to $27,200, up from a low of $26,964 where it hovered this morning. During his chart analysis, Soloway mentioned that if Bitcoin experiences a breakout, traders should keep an eye on the short-term resistance levels at approximately $28,400 to $28,500, and the subsequent target would be the significant psychological level of $30,000. In addition to Bitcoin, Polygon also surged to a multi-week high on Wednesday, despite market uncertainty ahead of the Fed announcement. The bulls have been trying to push Cardano above the 20-day EMA, $0.25, for the past few days, but the bears have not relented. Now, let's direct our attention towards the video. What's, what have we seen? Trendline hit, pulled back. Trendline pierced, pulled back a little bit. Trendline pierced, stalling here. So again, the trend line is working. That's what it's supposed to do. It's resistance, right? And again, trend line to trend line to trend line right down there. So the question I have, though, is this. Today, we have a Federal Reserve decision. If we're hovering here and the Fed causes the dollar to drop, let's say it gets more dovish, it's possible we could see a breakout on Bitcoin above this level in the near term. Now, again, you might see people getting very bullish in crypto saying, oh, here we go with all time highs. Don't get too excited. Let the charts guide you. Take the emotion out of it. Again, as soon as I got control of my emotion and learned the charts, I became a 10x better trader, a 100x better trader, basically a profitable trader. The emotion is what screws you every single time. Look back at all of the trades that you've done. You either went in too heavy because you were emotionally thinking it was a no brainer or you got whipped out of the trade because you got emotional and you probably had too big of a position. So in any case, this is what we have here. If we break out on Bitcoin, this is your short-term resistance right here, just about 28,400 to 500. That would be your next target to the upside. If it gets through that, this trend line up here, which is right around 30,000, the even number of 30,000, that would be your next level of resistance. All right, so we'll watch that very closely. Couple others I want to just show you guys real quick on in terms of crypto, just quickly on crypto. This is an interesting chart to me. It's the Matic or Polygon chart. You have a pivot low down here, right? So we have pivot low and right through here, pivot low. And then we have a drop one here to here and right here. Look at this potential little mini breakout on Polygon slash Matic. Now, again, that's fine. Understand this. You, as long as Matic doesn't break this line here, that's okay. So a break, it's a breakout, but you just don't want to see Matic break this. If this breaks, it's going lower. As long as you stay above here, this could actually go higher in the near term. Interestingly enough, Cardano is not much different in that respect. Same general chart, 
Same trend line, wedge pattern, little bit of a breakout. Again, same thing applies. You just don't want to see it get below that line. Silver price provided good positive trades yesterday to approach our weighted target at 23.70. The white metal is currently placed around the $23.25 region and for now seems to have stalled its retracement slide from the $23.60 area or a two-week high touched on Wednesday. Despite a recent failed breakout attempt, gold maintains a bullish outlook. A weekly breakout above 1,931 and a two-day low at 1,923 are key levels to watch for potential moves. Soloway noted that the near-term silver chart looks neutral, making it hard to predict an upward or downward move. On the other hand, gold's resilience suggests it's primed for a breakout. Now, let's direct our attention towards the video. So silver has been now consolidating inside of this channel, or I should say this wedge pattern. And again, a wedge pattern is simply, and I went over this yesterday, a wedge pattern is simply a move up, a move down, a move up, down, up, down, and it's basically getting tighter and tighter. It's consolidating. And what that tells you is that eventually you will either break down or you break out. Breakout would be above this level here. Upside is somewhat limited to this line here. A breakdown is down to this level right here. Now again, ultimately my long-term view, if you look at the big picture on silver, it is a bullish chart. However, this chart in the near term is more neutral. And when I say neutral, what that means is it's a no touch. In other words, you don't have a good enough read with this chop to understand is it gonna break up here or is it gonna go down here? Now down the line, if you told me, hey Gareth, my time horizon is six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Well, then you know what you do? You say, well, why am I looking at this tiny time frame? Instead, what I need to do is go to my larger time frame. Now, if we go to our larger time frame, what we see is a much bigger channel formation, which again is in the upper ranges. You had this big move up, and all this is consolidation. And inevitably, whether it goes here or here, eventually it goes up here. And that's the key, guys. Time frame is very, very important. If you're a day trader, you're generally trading off the, the, the smaller time frames, the, the five minute, the 10 minute, the 15 minute, the hourly. If you're a swing trader, you're probably focusing on the daily. If you're a longer term investor, you're looking at the weekly chart and the monthly chart because that's going to give you the bigger move. The problem with looking at a too small time frame when you're, when you're really investing for a bigger time frame is that you're going to get whipped out of the trade. You're going to see some little move and you're going to get, get scared and exit that trade when it's just a little move inside of the bigger pattern formation. So very, very important there. Okay, we flip over to gold. This is the daily gold chart. But if we go back a couple months, gold is basically flat. Right? We can see that very clearly here where, again, you go back two months, you're basically flat on gold. That's amazing. Historically, if you saw that sharp of a move up in the US dollar and gold went sideways, that almost never happens. Now, what again is that telling us? It's telling us gold is getting ready to break out. You've already broken out. Here's a trend line. All right, so you have this pivot right up here to this area right here. We broke out above that one. Now we've hit this secondary one from this pivot, right, to this pivot right here, and we're now hitting that one. We get through this, there'll be a little resistance here, but my guess is. We're heading back to the all-time high. Is it going to be by year end? It's tough to know. Timing, when you get into these nuances of timing, super hard to know. Is it by December? Is it by January? By February? Who knows? But the chart, again, is telling us this is going up. In the past week, Bitcoin has demonstrated resilience by consistently staying above its support level, signaling robust buyer interest. A thorough analysis of multiple time frames further supports the notion that Bitcoin is currently in a bullish momentum. Meanwhile, precious metals are feeling the pressure due to the Federal Reserve's projection of an additional rate hike in 2023. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this information valuable, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to stay informed with the latest news and videos. Thanks for joining us.